Hello everybody, I am Dr. Jitain Pandey and I am your instructor for this module. In this module, we are going to discuss about different types of social engineering. After viewing this lecture, the learner shall be able to differentiate between various types of social engineering, identify various techniques to identify phishing attack and explain various types of social engineering techniques using phone and email. There are many types of social engineering attacks, but they can be broadly split into three categories that are physical social engineering, remote social engineering and hybrid social engineering. In physical social engineering, the attackers attempt to gain physical access to a sensitive office or location and in remote social engineering, the attacker attempts to gain access to information or resource remotely. For example, over the phone or via email. Some attackers combine both strategies known as hybrid social engineering. For example, the physical breach may follow a series of remote social engineering attacks. Often, social engineering is combined with a technical attack making for an extremely effective and dangerous assault. The types of social engineering attacks are reflected in the various social engineering tests you can perform. Now let us discuss these three types of social engineering in details. Let us start with physical social engineering. In a physical social engineering attack, the social engineer attempts to gain access to a physical location. The attacker may do this via various methods like the first technique is piggybacking. It is used to enter restricted area by convincing an authorized person. Second is eavesdropping. Attacker can gain information by hearing a discussion between two people or by reading emails and listening to the telephonic conversation. Third is impersonation. The attacker acts like someone else to trap the victim. Fourth is dumpster driving. Valuable information can often be found on trash printers and pieces of paper. And the fifth is reverse social engineering. It is a more advanced method. In this, the attacker creates a scenario where the victim ends up asking for information to the attacker and this process ends up providing the required information to the attacker. Typically, the attacker appears to be in a position of authority to ensure the victim has to reach out to him for resolution of a problem which the attack has set up for him. Reverse social engineering requires good pre-attack research and planning. However, if executed well, it is more successful in attaining gaining quality information. Second type of social engineering is remote social engineering. Remote social engineering involves pointed and real-time communication with the target over the phone or via email or via instant messaging. They will use technology so they can perform these social engineering attacks remotely such as by phone, email, social media, instant messaging and even from search engine results. Physical honeypots are found wide impact as well with CDs and USB keys. This uses items planted to lure employees to run payloads. The third type of social engineering is computer-based social engineering. Computer-based social engineering is implemented by using software or programming application like emails, instant messengers, websites, pop-ups, etc. Let us discuss how social engineering attacks are performed by email. Social engineering emails take many forms. The social engineer tries to build rapport as a precursor to the actual breach or he or she tries to elicit information or spread malware by trickling the email recipient into opening a malicious attachment or visiting a malicious website. Two of the most common forms of social engineering over email are phishing and 419 scams. Phishing emails typically take the form of fake notifications purporting to be from a well-known organizations like bank, payment systems or software vendors for possible updates. Asking for the recipient's personal information including user's credentials, credit card numbers or banking information. 
Some examples are an email looking like it's from your bank, asking you to verify details or a phone call pretending to be from a company that you trust, requesting you to divulge confidential information like a PIN number. Phishing attacks are essentially a bait and hook approach, wherein the email is a bait used to lure unsuspecting victims before hooking information from them. The social engineering really takes place during the bait, which should be enticing enough to convince the intended victims to open the message and follow the instruction within it. The hook is the method whereby the social engineer gets information from the victims, either a link to a malicious website or a telephone number that the victim is asked to call. Phishing messages used to be easy to identify thanks to the bad grammar and spelling, poorly formatted emails and obviously fake links. However, they are becoming more sophisticated and more convincing because they have been increasingly personalized with more background research. Phishing attacks that are customized and targeted at particular individuals are known as spear phishing. When targeted towards rich or powerful targets, they are sometimes called whale phishing. Phishing is not limited to email. You can get phishing message via social networks, SMS, which is also known as smishing, or voicemail, which is known as wishing. Now we will discuss some of the common techniques to identify phishing. The first technique to identify a phishing attack is by looking at the poorly formatted mails and body elements. A common practice of many hackers is to use misspelled words on purpose. While it may seem that this would easily reveal an illegitimate email, it is actually a tactic used to find less savvy users. Spammers have learned that if they get a response from a poorly written email, they are onto an easy target and will focus their efforts to bring that user down. Second technique is observe if the email requests for personal information. One tactic that is commonly used by hacker is to alert you that you must provide and update your personal information about an account. Fisher will use this tactic to drive urgency for someone to click on a malicious URL or download an attachment aiming to infect the user's computer or steal their information. Another technique to identify phishing attack is to look for suspicious attachments. Carefully review if it is this new email in your inbox the first time your bank has sent to you an attachment. The majority of financial institutions or retailers will not send out attachment via email. So be careful about opening any form or messages that seem suspicious. High risk attachments file types includes .exe, .scr, .zip, .com or .bat. Another technique to identify phishing attack is to look at the from and to addresses. Check the mail ID which it is claimed originating from. At times, your mail address has been the originator and the to field shows a large list of recipients, you should also be cautious. Legitimate emails will most likely be sent directly to you and you only. You may see undisclosed recipients and this is something to keep an eye on as well. It could be a valid send but double check. Another technique to identify phishing attack is to check for the URL. Ensure the link is legitimate as it claims and use encryption. It can be verified by looking at the HTTP protocol. The secure sites uses HTTPS protocol. However, in order to be extra cautious, it is best practice to always open a new window and go to the site directly without using the email link provided in an email. Another technique to identify phishing attack is to IP reputation. Verify the IP reputation of the email sender obtained from email headers. Feed the IP to the return paths sender score site. This tool will produce a score on the scale of 0 to 100 and will be able to give you some insight into the sending IP historical performance. The lower the score, 
the more likely the email is a phishing or a spoofing attempt. The second type of social engineering by email is Nigerian 419 or advanced fee fraud scam. An advanced fee scam is a type of fraud and one of the most common types of confidence trick. The scam typically involves promising the victim a significant share of a large sum of money which the fraudster requires a small upfront payment to obtain. Email messages are sent to addresses taken from a large mailing list. The letters promise rich rewards for helping officials of that government or bank or quasi government agency or sometimes just member of a particular family out of an embarrassment or a legal problem. Typically, the pitch includes mention of multi-million dollar sums with the open promise that you will be permitted to keep a sterling percentage of the funds you are going to aid in scrolling away for these foreigners. If a victim makes the payment, the fraudster either invites a series of further fees for the victim or simply disappears. It is named after the article of the Nigerian Penal Code under which the criminal can be prosecuted. Next example of social engineering by email is pop-up windows or browser interception. Pop-up messages informing the users that he had lost his network connection and needs to re-enter his username and password or the system has been infected with the malware. Need to download a software to get them clean and further divulge sensitive information and are sent to attackers. Now let us discuss one of the important technique of social engineering that is social engineering by phone. The social engineer attempts to get the victim to disclose sensitive information or to perform an action such as visiting a malicious website or granting the social engineer access to the, a certain system. The caller generally assumes a false identity and may use various techniques to convince the victim such as being overly friendly, acting in an authoritative manner or applying pressure. The caller may purport to be from tech support or an antivirus organization, a financial institution or even a charity. In many business cultures, challenging someone's identity is not socially acceptable and may be seen as impolite. So getting away with assuming a false identity may be easier than you think. Now let us discuss various type of social engineering techniques using phone. First technique is mumble attack. Mumble attack are telephonic social engineering attacks targeted at call center agents. The social engineer poses as a speech impaired customer or as a personal calling on behalf of a speech impaired customer. Victims of the attack are often made to feel awkward or embarrassed and releases information as a result. Second technique is using IVR or phone phishing which is also known as wishing. The use of interactive voice response system to create an official sounding bank IVR system to trick people into providing their personal information. An example is where a hacker will pose as a bank employee or even use other IVR message to advise the target that they have to call into the bank to correct the issue. They provide a number which is not a bank's number for the target to call in on and when he does they record their account information as it is entered into the phone. A hacker could even perform something similar in that they use the same method but instead attack a company employee in order to have them attempt to enter their password via telephone. Apart from the above discussed techniques, there are some other popular methods used by attackers or hackers to perform social engineering attacks. We are now going to discuss some of the other popular techniques. First technique is boy who cries wolf attack. Like in the classic fable, in a boy who cries wolf attack, a series of fall alarms are set off prior to the real attack so that by the time the real attack actually happens, no one thinks it is an attack so they don't bother responding. 
in a way they have been social engineered into thinking the attacks isn't real. Another technique is road apples or baiting techniques. A road apple is a physical object, usually a storage device such as a USB drive, a memory card or CD that a social engineer leaves in the vicinity of his target organization in a hope that one of the organization's staff members will pick it up and plug it into the computer unknowingly running a malicious program or in the case of an ethical social engineering test a being program that might do something like redirect the user to a training and awareness website third technique is diverging theft used mostly with thefts but still consider a social engineering method the purpose is to convince a legitimate delivery person who is bringing a delivery to an address that the package is requested somewhere else, usually around the corner. Fourth technique is pretexting. Pretexting is an act of creating and using an imaginary scenario to engage a target victim in a manner that increases the chance the victim will reveal information or do action that would be unlikely in ordinary circumstances. It is more than a simple lie. Be cautious because strangers try to fool you by creating false situation and make you to believe in order to collect the confidential information. Now let us discuss some of the techniques for preventing social engineering attacks. Social engineers manipulate human feelings such as curiosity or fear to carry out schemes and draw victims into their traps. Therefore, be wary whenever you feel alarmed by an email, attracted to an offer displayed on a website, or when you came across stray digital media lying about. Being alert can help you protect yourself against most social engineering attacks taking place in the digital realm. Moreover, the following tips can help improve your vigilance in relation to social engineering hacks. Be suspicious of unsolicited phone calls, visits or email messages from individuals asking about employees or other internal information. If an unknown individual claims to be from a legitimate organization, try to verify his or her identity directly with the company. Do not reveal personal or financial information in email and do not respond to email solicitation for this information. This includes following links sent in email. Don't send sensitive information over the internet before checking a website security. Pay attention to the URL of a website. Malicious websites may look identical to a legitimate site, but the URL may use a variation in spelling or a different domain. If you are unsure about an email request is legitimate, try to verify it by contacting the company directly. Do not use contact information provided on a website connected to a request. Instead, check previous statements for contact information. Information about known phishing attacks is also available online from a group such as the Anti-Phishing Working Group. Install and maintain antivirus software, firewalls, and email filters to reduce some of this traffic. Take advantage of any anti-phishing features offered by your email client and web browsers. A well-documented and open security policy connected with standards and guidelines and acceptable uses policy for business uses of email, computer systems, telephone, network, etc. Do not provide personal information or information about your organization including its structure or networks unless you are certain of a person's authority to have the information. Information classification and handling for identifying critical information assets and related handling instructions. Personnel security by screening prospective employees, contractors to ensure that they do not pose a security threat to the organization if employed. Ensure physical security to secure the facility from unauthorized physical access with the help of sign-in procedures, electronic and biometric security devices, etc. 
information access control, password uses and guidelines for generating secure passwords, access authorization and accountability procedures, securing remote access via modems, etc. Automated password resets and synchronization tools can raise the responsibility of managing passwords from a tech support and the help desk. Information security awareness training to ensure that employees are kept informed of threats and countermeasures and their responsibilities in securing company's assets, the company must regularly conduct information security awareness training. Now let us discuss what to do if you think you are a victim of social engineering. If you believe you might have revealed sensitive information about your organization, report it to the appropriate people within the organization, including network administrators. They can be alert for any suspicious or unusual activity. If you believe your financial accounts may be compromised, contact your financial institution immediately and close any accounts that may have been compromised. Watch for any unexplainable charges to your account. Immediately change any passwords you might have revealed. If you use the same password for multiple resources, make sure to change it for each account and do not use that password in the future. Watch for other signs of identity theft. If you feel you have been victimized by an attempt at social engineering, report the incident to your manager and to security personnel immediately. The attackers exploits poor security awareness from both an information and operational security perspective. Even if the attackers were able to obtain computer passwords, they successfully obtained sensitive personal and company information. A social engineering attack reveals vulnerabilities in security policies and awareness that cannot be detected through other means. In general, social engineering attacks will uncover similar problems in many organizations. However, each attack will yield problems that are specific to the organization being examined. It is for this reason that every threat assessment should include a thorough social engineering effort performed by qualified and trusted individuals. I hope by now you have a fair understanding of social engineering, its types, suggested remedies to avoid being victim of social engineering attacks, and steps that one should follow if one suspects to be a victim of social engineering attack. Thank you.